study in the book of Exodus, let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Father, we want to thank Thee for the Word of God. We want to thank Thee for the details that You've given to us in the book of Exodus about various things, about the way people lived, how they responded, how they obeyed, and how they disobeyed the Word of God. Allow us to learn from this. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're here in Exodus chapter 24 this afternoon, and we'll start out reading 10 verses. Uh, for the first, oh, it is 25. Did I say 24? I think I did say 24. Let me rewind it. It was 25. 25. Chapter 25. Thank you for correcting that. Uh, for the first part of the class, we will go over 10 verses. So let's start. We're looking at 10 verses here. Jacob, I mean, Mrs. Garmer, uh, you go ahead and begin with verse 1, please. This is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold, silver, and brass. And blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goat's hair. And ram skins dyed red, and badger skins, and shittim wood. Oil for the light, spices for anointing oil, and for sweet incense. Mrs. Grummer, read verse 7, please. According to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. And they shall make an ark of shittim wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubic and a half the length thereof. All right, Tammy, I have a question for you from verse 1. Uh, so, who spoke unto Moses? The Lord was the one that was speaking to Moses. Now, Mrs. Grummer, remind me who Moses is one more time, please. Excuse me? Uh, remind me who Moses is uh, one more time. Oh, uh, Moses was chosen by God to lead the people out of Israel. That's right. And so here we have out of Egypt, right? Out of Egypt into Israel, right? Right. Okay. Right. Uh, and so, Jacob, uh, who was to be brought an offering? Yeah, so the Lord was supposed to be the recipient of the offering that they, that they that they were going to bring. Now, if we notice in this chapter, in the chapter 25, of the things that they brought, a lot of these things will be used, will see being used in chapter 26. These are some of the things that, that pertain to the construction of the tabernacle, the construction of, of the tabernacle. So, uh, Phil, go ahead. And uh, in Israel right now, they've duplicated all of the, the accessories for the temple, the robes and uh, everything. They're just waiting uh, the rebuilding of the temple itself. So they have all the materials, they you're have saying? All the materials. Yes, that's it. very interesting, done. isn't it? They have all the materials. Yep. So when... Uh, they have a huge menorah, okay. uh, which is in a in an unbreakable glass case okay. right by uh, 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 the wall, where uh, the wailing wall. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so everybody can see it. The Western Wall. Okay. So, uh, from from so, what types of precious metals, Mom, were they supposed to um, were acceptable to the Lord? Gold, silver, and brass. Gold, silver, and brass. Now, uh, Tammy, what do you know about gold, silver, and brass? They last a long time. They're worth a lot. They last a long time. They're worth a lot. Um, now, which one would you say, Mrs. Grummer, is worth the most? I would say gold. Gold. And then silver and then brass, in that, in that order. Um, Some but, is delicate, so the delicate. Yeah, isn't gold more delicate than brass? It is. It's more malleable and more ductile, uh, gold is. And then silver yeah, is a little bit less, and then the brass is even even less than the, than the silver. So it's, it's like, let's say it's softer. Mm -hmm. Rather than use the word ductile, malleable, it's softer. It's softer. Um, and so Jacob describes some of the colors of the various offerings from verse, from verse 4. Describes some of those colors. Purple, scarlet, fine linen, that would be white, and the goat's hair would be goat color. And blue. 
That's right. And blue. Don't forget the blue. You still, you say blue already? Blue. He said blue at first. That's good. And, um, and Elaine, um, name the two types of wood, which, um, the Lord said, the Lord cited as a possible offering for the Lord. This is in verse five, Elaine. Are you still there, uh, Paul? Pardon me. Are you still there, Jacob? And Elaine and Paul, are you there? Um, just, just give me one moment here to try and correct this problem. But um, you still... One type of wood mentioned. One type of wood. Let me see. There's... Um, In verse 5, anyway, yeah. Are you there, uh, Paul? Elaine? Is this call on line 2? It has to be on line 2. 856-854-4452. Hello? Just let me... Um, can anyone hear me? Okay, let's... Uh, Jacob can hear you. I can hear me. Uh, just a second, Jacob. I'm going to have to put you in. i got to put you in hold again. Hopefully I don't lose you. Do we know we have Elaine someplace? I thought we had Elaine. Are you there, Elaine? Okay. Are you there, Elaine? Okay. okay. Uh, are you there, Paul? I Were you able to hear me before? Okay. Are you there, Jacob? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, so let's let's look at this verse five for a minute. Um, name the type of wood. It's one type of wood. That's right. Not not two types. One type of wood that's cited as a possible offering, and that was the shittim wood. We got ram skin that's dyed red and badger skin. Plus we have this shittim wood. Now uh, Elaine, or rather Paul, um, uh, maybe you remember this from verse six. Um, what are the two purposes of spices? What are the two purposes of spices, what do you say? <coughs> go, Elaine, read verse 6 for me. Elaine, go ahead and read verse 6 for me, please. <coughs> okay, so Paul, my question for you is, what are the two purposes for spices? That's right. For anointing... That's good. And for the sweetness of the incense. Now, yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, uh, Elaine, what was to be placed in the priestly ephod and the breastplate? Okay. So, so different types of stones. Now, if we if we notice, you know, these are special things that would be put in the, in, the, in the priestly garments. And so, um. Bill, what were the children of Israel to make for the Lord? What were they to make for the Lord? A sanctuary. A shank sanctuary. Now, what is your understanding of a sanctuary? That's a, uh, uh, a movable uh, tabernacle. Okay. That's what they were making for him, this movable tabernacle, a place of where he could dwell. Okay, me. A dwelling place for God. A dwelling place for God. That's why a lot of churches, they, they call it a sanctuary. Yes, yeah, some. Or auditorium or whatever room they need. You're right. Yeah, they do. They say the sanctuary. Many times they call their main auditorium the sanctuary. The sanctuary. Now, I forgot about that. That's what they said. Bethel was the sanctuary. I didn't mean Bethel, but Adam Mm-hmm. That's right. And um, I mean, there, there, there are some, perhaps in a, in a non-technical sense, I understand what they mean. But in a technical sense, you know, it's only it's all, God. God is not. Limited to some in a building, he dwell where God dwell. He dwells within the within individuals, and so a building that may have a name of a church on the outside. That's only a building where a church will meet. I understand in a sense it's considered a church building, but in a in a in a, in a that's in a, in a in a certain other sense it's a building where the church a church meets. Tammy, your thought. Um, and John somewhere mm -hmm. it says where. Yes. No, no, that, that's that's good. If you when you find the specific reference, let me know. Uh, John, eight, John eighteen. John eighteen. John eighteen. Um, now, Mama, in verse nine, upon what was the design of the tabernacle and the instruments based? It was after the pattern that God showed them. Okay. Now, um, 
what what is a pattern, Tammy? What's a pattern? It's something you use to make something like it. It's something you use to make something like it. Or or make something like something else. Or sometimes it's just it's just used to make something. Um, uh, the pattern may or may not be a design with instructions. Okay, that's good. A design with instructions. Uh, what else were we going to say, Tammy? Well, I was just going to say that it may or may not actually be the um, thing that you, I mean, it may not, like for instance, I was thinking of a dress pattern or something like that. It may not actually be, it's just made out of tissue paper. Um, but in this case of the scriptures, um, the pattern of those things were the heavenly things. Mm -hmm. So in that case, it was the real thing. Yes, um, right. As opposed to the pattern that you're mm -hmm. with. So I, that's why I was hesitating because I was thinking about that. I didn't see it in, in John 18. Try Matthew 18. Try Matthew 18, perhaps. Maybe right around verse 20. Matthew 18, verse 20. Right around there. Um, and so, uh, Mrs. Grummer, have you ever made anything out of a pattern before? Mm -hmm, that's right, clothing. And as Tammy was saying, you have, you have there's this tissue paper. It's like a tissue paper pattern. Um, now sometimes if you have a dress or a skirt or outfit that you really like, it could be it could be anything, I suppose. You could actually use that itself as a pattern. Like if I really liked, you know, Bill's shirt or my tie or my whatever I liked, you know, I could I could use a, the real a real thing to, as a pattern. I'll sell you this shirt. You know how much? $30. Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> yes, Jacob. Well, how much do you want to sell your shirt for? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you right off my back. Okay, all right. Jacob, your thought. Uh, it is Matthew 18, and uh, I'm looking at Hebrews 13, and 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 I'm looking
another toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be. All right. And so, Jacob, what was to be overlaid with pure gold? Uh, the ark of cherub wood. The ark was to be overlaid with pure gold. That's inside and out. Inside and out. That's right. Inside and outside. It was to be overlaid with pure gold. Um, Elaine, how many uh, rings of gold were to be cast, and where were they be placed? Okay, that's good. So they got four rings, and uh, they go in the corners, and rings of gold. Elaine, please read verse 13 for me, and then Paul, listen to it. I'm going to ask you a question about this. Read verse 13. Okay, so Paul, first of all, what were the staves to be made of? Uh, shittim wood. And and, shittim wood and yep. They'd be made with shittim wood and they would be overlaid with gold. That's right. That's good. That's good. Um, and so be a stave. Now, what, what is your idea of a stave, Bill? A uh, stave is like uh, a staff. Uh, it's any kind of like a wooden pole. Okay. Yeah. Like a big a wooden pole. Yeah. And the, the function of this wooden pole was to carry and transport certain types of the furniture that was inside the tabernacle. And it was put through these rings, these gold rings that were put on the four corners in this particular instance, uh, example. Uh, so in verse 14, uh, Mom, where were the staves placed and why? Um, into the side rings of the ark that someone could carry the ark okay. without touching the ark. That's right. <coughs> it's for these, this, these certain things needed to be, to be carried were to be carried and not put on carts. They were to be carried on shoulders, on backs. That's why you had the staves. Any type of the furniture that had the staves was intended to be carried. That's how it was supposed to be transported. Yes, go ahead. I think the ark was covered over with a different yes, cover. Yes, it was. Too. Mm -hmm. So people just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. That's right, it was covered. And some of the other furniture was that way too. I don't remember it all. That's right. So tell me, what's something that was not removed from the, uh, from the ark? In verse, well, it wasn't supposed to be removed. Wasn't, wasn't supposed to be removed. I have a, an example of a time when it was removed. That it was, the staves weren't to be uh, removed from the rings. That's right. The staves were not supposed to be taken out. Now, set your example. That was when they were wrongly removed. Okay. Well, in um, 2 Samuel 6, mm -hmm. okay, we remember uh, when he preached last week. We were talking about well how um, Eli's sons took the ark into battle and then the ark was taken by the Philistines, which we didn't. It wasn't in that passage. Right. It was coming out. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, so it was in it was in Philistia all this time. All this time, and David was bringing it back to the um, to this. I don't. I don't think it was actually Jerusalem. He was taking it and. Um, can I read this? Please do. Please read it. Verse, um, 2 Samuel 6, um, verse 2. And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Bailey of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drave the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord, on all manner of instruments made of fir wood, even the harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God, and took hold of it, for the oxen shook, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error, and there he died by the ark of God. Thank you. So there was a case when they were returning, they were trying to bring the cart back from, pardon the ark back after it was captured by the Philistines. Probably there weren't any staves in any longer. No. No. I don't, but they got the staves, I mean, so when it they... It seems like... Yeah. But 
But they could have made some. Well, they, when they came to the retreat. Say, did it say well, I think, I think, somewhere that they had them? Well, when they, after, after being 20 years in, uh, uh, no, after, was it 20 years? Was it um, three months or six months? Obed Edom in the household of Obed Edom. Okay. When they went to retrieve the ark, the second time, the second time, uh, they re, they re, they they had staves. I'm not sure if it was the, but the staves were, were they were the right the, the original staves or if they were new staves. Mm. But when they came to get it the second time, they made sure they transported it like they were supposed to transport it. I believe we'll, we'll find that to be true someplace later on in the next couple of chapters after where you read. So, um, Mrs. Grammer, um, what was to be placed inside the ark? What was to what was to be placed inside the ark? Uh, For six, sixteen. Oh. And thou shalt put in the ark the, oh, the testimony. The testimony, testimony. More than likely, this has reference to the, those those ten, those two tables of stone on which the ten commandments uh, are written, Bill. Yeah, that that part is pretty much obvious. The tablets. But also, uh, is it possible that all these uh, instructions that follow might Moses have been writing them down and possibly putting them in the ark uh, as well? It's a possibility. I mean, late, later on we have we have reference being made to I mean, later on the scripture references to the, the manna, Aaron's rod that but, uh, budded, and the, yeah. the tablets. Uh, it's possible that there is there is a hint of, of maybe perhaps that's where they could have been stored. Uh, Jacob, your thought. Yes. 31:26. Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For another rebellion and stiff neck, behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, you've been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death? And that's uh, Deuteronomy 31:26 and 27. So, so that would go beyond could go beyond the Ten Commandments, correct? What you're saying. Second Kings twenty two eight to thirteen, right? Kings. Uh, thank, thank you, Jake. Uh, Tammy, go ahead. Um, just because you, you brought it up again about how, you know, he brought the ark again. I, it was actually in the same chapter. Okay. But I didn't see any reference to the staves, but I'm sure they had them. Okay. But whether or not they were the originals, mm -hmm. I mean, I assume maybe the, the Philistines. I mean, it does, 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 it does, uh, we do have a, the staves being cited at the dedication of the temple. Right. When, when they bring when they bring the ark into the temple, oh, it's brought okay. in on staves. Is they then they then they, then they, then they so in first Kings. once it, once the once the tabernacle pardon me, once the ark of the covenant reaches its final place inside the temple, they remove those staves. Yeah, but why? Because the staves were gold too. Yes, they were. They were. Well, they might have done something good with them. Yeah, the, the staves alone would have been worth a fortune. Mm -hmm. They would have. They would have. 
Uh, so, so um, Elaine, um, what was uh, made of pure gold from verse 17? What was something that was made of pure gold? Second. Verse 17. The mercy seat, that's right. Tammy, go ahead. No, I wasn't, I wasn't saying that they didn't have them. Yes. I was only saying that perhaps the reason that the Philistines put it on the cart was that they knew nothing about it, and they took and kept the staves. Mm -hmm. Maybe that could, that could be. That could be, yeah. See, the Philistines, they put it on, they put it on the, uh, the cart, and they let, the, let it run because it was, they put it, in, they, they didn't want it anymore. And so they let the car, they put it on a cart and let the, let the cart take it wherever it wanted to. Let the oxen go and stop at the house of Odebedin. Odeb 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 they were frightened of it, of yeah. the Lord. Bad things were happening. Yes, too. bad things were happening to the Philistines, uh, to, to the false gods. Yes, go ahead. Could be that this, the, the, the ring that the staves were in was so small, the staves were pretty secure. Could be. I but they were able to be put in and removed. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure how easy it was, but you, you're correct. Well, because yeah. it does say in that verse, verse 15, they shall not be taken from it. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't have to be said if they were permanent. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Now, well, um, they, they probably thought they were valuable. They were. Yeah, they, they were valuable. Gold over them. Mm -hmm. yeah, they did. They did have gold over them. So, uh, Elaine, please read verse 18. And listen up, Paul, to verse 18. Read verse 18. Uh, so, Paul, what was to be made of, uh, of gold and fashioned by beaten work? Uh, the two cherubims. Two cherubims. These two heavenly beings uh, were to be made of, of pure gold of beaten work. Uh, like we said before, gold is very soft, very malleable, very ductile, so they can, they can fashion these cherubs, cherubims, these two cherubims, by beaten work, just by hammering out the gold and making it form to a certain way, almost like uh, the principle of, of um, sometimes they have, in, in, in our modern equipment, we have we stamp things. Uh, we went to a, a tour of an engine factory uh, not, too, not too long ago, and the actual crankshaft of the engine is stamped, essentially. And they heat, they heat the metal up, the steel up to whatever the melting point of steel is, or close to 2,000 degrees or 1,800 degrees, 2,200 degrees, and they come down and they stamp, they have, they have, they stamp the steel, and from that they fashion a, a, um, a camshaft. Everything goes through several different stages. It's got to be refined and polished up, and the rough edges have to be taken off. And so when we think of this beaten work, you know, you're, you're hitting and you're fashioning this block of gold into these two cherubs. And so, um, Bill, what was to be placed on both ends of the mercy seat? Uh, the two cherubs. Two cherubs. The two cherubs. Um, and Miami, verse 20, where were the faces of the cherubims to be looking? They were looking at one another and faced toward the mercy seat. Okay, they were looking towards each other and also to, towards the mercy seat. So, Tammy, let's, uh, let's start with reading some more verses here, beginning with verse 21 down to verse 30. And you start with verse 21, please. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I give thee. Mrs. Grammer, verse 22. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above, from above the mercy seat, from between the two cher cherubims, which are upon the ark, the testimony of all things, which I will give thee, in the, in, in commandment unto the children of Israel. And thou shalt make a table of wood, two cubits of its length thereof, and a cubit and a breadth, the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. In Elaine, verse 24, please. And thou shalt make unto it a border of an hand breadth round about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. 
Go to verse 26, Tammy. And thou shalt make for it, make for it rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings be for places of the staves to bear the table. Mrs. Grummer, verse 28, please. And thou shalt make staves of shit of wood and overlay them with gold, and the table may be borne with them. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and the spoons thereof, and the covers thereof, and the bowls thereof, to cover with all of pure gold shalt thou make them. Annie Lane, verse 30. All right, thank you. So, Bill, what was to be placed above the ark, and what was to be placed inside the ark? Uh, that's question uh, 21. 21. Mm -hmm. Verse 21. Uh, the mercy seat and the tablets. Mercy seat and, and, and the testimony of the tablets. That's correct. And so, Tammy, uh, where did God say he would commune with Moses? From above the mercy seat. From above the mercy seat, <coughs> from between the two cherubims. Bims. Uh, so this is so this is a picture of what God is doing, what God will, what God did then, and what God is doing now, in a different sense, in this age of grace. Uh, Mrs. Grummer, what is the height of the table that's made of shittim wood? What's the height of that table? Cubic and a half, right? In verse 23, a cubic and a half. Now, Jacob, if we would convert this. Yeah, Jacob could do this. We're, we're going to get there in a second, Elaine. So, Jacob, if we would compute, compute a cubic and a half, what would that convert to? First of all, tell me what the conversion of a cubic is. A, a rough, you know, a cubic. About 18 inches. I mean, it ranges anywhere from, I mean, you can read it from anywhere from 17 inches to 22 and a half inches, but 18 inches is usually what. It's been the standard idea of a cubic is 18 inches. Usually, the measure from your elbow to the tip of your tip of your tip of your tip of your finger. And each person, of course, is, has a different cubic of a sort. But an average number would be 18 inches. And so, Elaine, the cubit is 18 inches. So, uh, Paul, if the cubit is 18 inches, how much is a cubit and a half? Uh, That's right, it would be 27 inches. That's what a cubit and a half would be. So 27 inches. So that's, that's pre a pretty short table, you know, as far as the height. There, we got a question, Tammy. Yeah, I know. Oh, go ahead, Jacob. I'm looking at something else. How high is that table in front there? This table is probably... 30 inches. 30 inches, probably two. Yeah, it's, it's, probably, it's probably 30 inches. So it's probably yeah. close to 27 inches, isn't it? Perhaps. We should measure that. Um, yeah, that's more like about 32, 33. It's probably, it's probably 35. For a cubit and a half? A cubit and a half no. is 24 inches. How many? 27 inches. What did I do wrong? A cubit's not 18 inches. No, 36 inches. Okay, a cubit is 18 inches. Are we talking about the height of the table? The height of the table is... A cubit and a half. A cubit, we said, we're stipulating is 18 okay, inches. I, I'm sorry. I'm although sorry, although I'm sorry, cubits do vary. I was but, thinking of another measurement. Okay, I understand. So, <laughs> I understand. Did, did you finish your thought there, uh, Paul and everybody, Jacob? Well, I have another question. Uh, What's the other question? What is, what is uh, showbread? What, what is that? Table of showbread. It's a, it's a certain bread that they would put out on the table. They designed this table, and each, each, each day they would change the showbread. They would, they would put on top of the table, this table, they would put the shortbread. It would be bread that would be just there uh, on the table. Tammy. Were there were 12 show, different, separate, I think separate so 12 pieces, different, one for each tribe. We'll say, I'm, I'm, I, hesitate, I hesitate to call them loaves. Because they were unleavened. But, but, but 12 units of showbread. And they would, be, they would be stacked up on, on this table. But they were stacked, or were they in, laid in around individually? I think they were. They may. Have, they could have been stacked. Although they could have been. In, we could look closer later on. But I, I thought they were stacked. But maybe they were not stacked. But 
which is not giving, I guess, giving us a definite answer. Um, what's your hashtag thought? Hashtag or not hashtag. <laughs> okay. Um, when David uh, was, King David was running yes. away, mm-hmm. he went in and they ate. Uh, I don't. I can't remember if they ate it off the table or if they ate the leftover from yesterday. Yeah, Abimelech, wasn't it? Yeah, I, mean, so. I forgot. That's right. He did. And um, I mean that. That then the Lord Jesus Christ makes a reference to that when he's he's accused of, of doing something. Does he not? He's disciples. Yes. Right. As far as on the Sabbath. Yes, day. that's right. Mm-hmm. Um. Yes. Go ahead, Jacob. Mm-hmm. Okay. This wasn't so long ago. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an over full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. Okay. Exodus 16. Tammy. Not to confuse anybody, but um, I was looking further in, in First Kings about looking for the ark. And it's interesting because it, it mentions they took out the staves. Um, well, they said that. Yeah. And but the next verse is what's really interesting. There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone. So the man pot of manna wasn't in there, mm-hmm. and Aaron's rod, the rod that bought it, wasn't there. No, it wasn't. So there were things that were missing. Mm-hmm. So it kind of makes you wonder. The what, stays, what, what happened to them? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, it does what make you wonder what they It does. Mm-hmm. You know, so maybe they maybe they had to replace them. I mean, they couldn't have replaced them. No, you can't. How, how could they replace them? You can't. So, I don't know. So, uh, so Bill, with, um, with what was the table to be overlaid in verse 24, this table that's 27 inches high? Gold. Gold. <laughs> overlaid with gold. Uh, and then, Mom, in verse 25, what was to be the width of the border of the table? Uh, a hand breadth around it, and a golden crown on the border of. So we have a hand breath. You know, this is from from the, from from here to here. It's a hand breath. Is that a hand breath like that? A hand breath. That's like a hand breath. Nine inches. Yeah. It's not this well, it's way. it's a it's not quite. Oh, I thought it was this way. Oh, well, it this this is. Here. Okay, maybe maybe this maybe this is. See, this is a this is a what we call a span. Like, a span. Oh, that's a from span. From here to here, that, that's half of a cubit. Okay. A span is half of a cubit. Then. Is this like this? I I thought the hand breath was. I believe the hand breath is like this, from here to here, rather than being a span. But we'll we'll look we'll look. We'll, we'll, what do you mean? Your hands closed? Hands closed. So how much is that? But this would this would be a span. This would be just. I suspect five inches. I don't know. It's okay. Four to five inches. See if we if I measure this 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 molding up here, you know it's 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 a you probably put my hand up here if no one can. I put my hand up on this table. Of course this. No, it's all right. It's fine. It's, this is not a hand breath up here, but it's it's it's, it's like a half a hand, half a hand up here on this table. I'm holding it on that table that's in front of us. Uh, so that's another thing we must clarify. We got to we must clarify the the a, a follow up on the definition of a hand breath, whether it's and we have to also clarify the show breath. I guess I. I... Just remember hand breath and span together or something. Okay. Okay. And then we want to know about the showbread? Yes, we want to know about, what the, about show. the showbread. Whether we have them, whether they're stacked or unstacked. Okay. Uh, Italian, hopefully. Yes. I like Italian bread. It's unloving bread. <laughs> it's unloving. It's unloving. It's unloving. Um, <laughs> so we have this table that's made of gold, uh, it's overlaid with gold. Um, we have the rings. That are, that, are, that are gold. We have the, the places for the staves. Um, and what what are the purpose of Elaine? Read verse twenty for me, please. Yeah, read the verse for me. Okay. Okay. 
Is that verse 26, Elaine? Oh, I'm waiting. Oh, okay. Before you suggest that they Alright, so Paul, how many rings were to be made? How many rings were to be made? Uh, four, four rings. Four rings. And do you understand the purpose of these rings? Uh, you put them each at the corner of the tables, and then consequently these rings could be accept staves uh, to be carried about. So, um, uh, Bill, where were the staves to be placed again in verse 27? Through the rings. They were to place, be placed through the rings. And uh, now, Mom, what's the purpose of the staves? To hold the, to be able to carry the That's right. Around. So you can carry, so the ark could be carried and borne yeah, from one place. The table, so. Yeah, the for the primary, it's the table, not the ark. I'm sorry, I, I, I missed my spoke. The it's a table. The ark, same this thing for the ark. Showbread, showbread table. This is, this is the table of showbread. Well, I left the room, so I didn't get That's understandable. It's understandable. It's understandable. It's a, um, I'm, I left it on the ark and it came And so, uh, Tammy, what were the utensils made? Is that a question we had before? It's well, from, I think they're made of uh, gold. Yeah, of pure gold. Verse 29. From verse, verse 20, they're made of pure gold. You down a bit, didn't you? Uh, a little around bit. Around 26 before. Yeah, we answered. We talked about 20, verse 26 with uh, um, but the four rings, and then we talked about the... Um, oh, okay, never mind. I wasn't following along. I was just thinking through. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, now, Mrs. Grummer, uh, how often was the table of showbread to be set set upon? Uh, daily. Daily. And so they had to, they had to put the spread out there every day. So it was kind of continually new, new, new bread. I don't know. Tammy, I thought. Always. So it was, it was always there. Yes. Mm -hmm. when, when they took one off, then they put a new one on. Mm -hmm. So it's always there. They always had their bread there. So they didn't have their dozen? Tell me what that means again, yeah. showbread. It was a place where they would put the, put the showbread out and yeah, display it. Doesn't, doesn't have some figurative thing. Well, it's, it, could, it could have reference to the body of Christ. Yeah, that could be. It could be referencing the body of Christ. As far as, you know, in, in, in during the observance of the Lord's table... And we have the bread. Also, during Passover, they had the bread. So, it could perhaps be remind in the first instance could be perhaps being a remembrance of them for the Passover, which ultimately the feast, bread. the feast of unleavened bread. And Jesus said, "This is my body," and he was observing the Passover. Yes, Tammy. Could they have used um, the, the meat offering for that? The flour and the oil that's... They may, they, may have, they may have used that for that. Could have been. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a good, good I mean, thought. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could have been used in that context. I don't remember. Okay, let's, um, let's read uh, verse uh, 31 to 40. Jacob, go ahead and start with verse 31, please. And thou shalt make... I'm not Jacob. But it's okay. Right. Sorry. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold of beaten work. Shall his candlesticks be made? His shift and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the side of it. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Elaine, verse 33, please. Three bowls made white unto the almonds with an off of the flower of the one branch. And in the candlestick shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers. Verse 35 says. There shall be a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceed out of the candlestick. Strange way. Of and their knops and their branches shall be of the same. All shall be one beaten work of pure gold. And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. 
Mrs. Grummer, 38. Yes. And the thongs thereof, and the snuff stitches thereof shall be of pure gold. Okay. Of a talent of, of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. You know, verse 40, please. Now, go ahead. What do you think a snuff dish is? It's something that extinguishes the flame. Oh, I thought it was something to do with snuff. It extinguishes the flame. Okay. They have uh, like a little, it's almost like a little bowl mm -hmm. on a stick. Right. Yeah, oh, okay. In the Catholic I Church, and they use it, they put it over the candles, and they mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. extinguish them. Okay, I know what that mm -hmm. is now. Now, uh, Paul, listen up here to verse 31. Oh, Elaine, go go ahead and read verse 31, Elaine, for me. And then Paul, i got a question for you about 31, Elaine. Okay. Now shall make candles that the pure gold meat work, so the candles that be made. The seraph and the branches and the branches and the dogs and the flowers shall be the same. Okay, so Paul, of what was the candlestick made? A pure gold. A pure gold. Again, this is a beaten work because gold is very soft. It's very ductile, very malleable, and so it could be, could be, it could be fashioned, uh, even though it, it takes skill to do this. But nonetheless, nonetheless, it was a beaten work of pure gold. Um, and so, Bill, how many branches did this candlestick have? Six. Six branches. And so you had three, three on one side and three on the other. Um, the candlestick, function of a candlestick, would you say, Mom? The function of it? Yeah, what's the function of a candlestick? Light. To give light. You have to give light. It holds the candles. It gives light. And so, um, Tammy, what were the bowls of the branches of the candlestick made like unto? Tammy, go ahead. Thought? Well, they were made like unto almonds. Mm -hmm. But like, they're, they're, they're not putting candles in this. They're using oil. They're using oil. That's right. So it's the whole of the oil and the light. Lights so the... you don't have wax mess with this, right. this mm -hmm. candlestick. That's right. It's just like a... oil lamps. Yeah. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, Mrs. Grummer, what is inside the candlestick? Uh, flour. Four bowls, right? Yes. Four bowls made like into almonds. That's what's right. in, that's what's inside the candlestick. Um, now, Jacob, tell me, where were the that where were the, the that held the oil? Man. Held the oil. That's right. Held the oil. Where were the knobs located? In verse 35. Under the two branches, the same. Under the two branches, these knobs. And so, um, so Elaine, how many different pieces was the candlestick comprised? How many pieces were there? So it's just one piece. It's all one piece of a, uh, not several pieces, it's one solid piece, like that, that camshaft or crankshaft I was talking about. It was one solid piece of steel. Uh, so the candlestick was one solid piece of gold that was fashioned after beating it so long. Um, Elaine, go to reverse 37 for me, and then Paul got a question for you for verse 37. Reverse 37, Elaine. So Paul, what's the total number of lamps that were made? Seven, that's right, seven lamps. And uh, Bill, of what were the tongs and the snuff dishes made of? Gold. Gold, pure gold. Everything was made of gold, all yeah. those utensils. Yeah, that's right, everything. And some, <clears throat> things, some, some of these things were plated and some things were pure. Or they said they were overlaid and some were pure. And so what was the weight of the snuff dish, Mom, the weight of the snuff dish? Uh, one talent of pure gold. Can you understand what the snuff dish is now, right? The purpose, the function of a snuff dish? To put the flame out. To put the flame out, that's right. And um, much is a talent? I'm not sure the weight of a talent. Um, talent could be... We could find out if we knew where a Bible verse said talent, and then it would say on the bottom. You know, verse 39, Exodus 25, 39. <laughs> Evidently, we're supposed to know what that means. Okay. A talent. Um, 
I forget what it is. Well, in the Bible dictionary you've got in the back there, Unger's dictionary, you've probably got it in there. We'll have to research the word the, talent. The, the, um, the one parable, I think it's a parable, there were five talents, there were... Right. Was it three talents or ten talents? One, three, and five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one, three, and five. And so, I tell me, uh, where did the Lord give Moses the pattern to make all these things? In the Mount of, the Mount of Sinai. Mount Sinai. He showed it in the Mount. When he was up there for 40 days. Mm -hmm. That's right. Was somebody waving to him? No, somebody's trying to repair the uh, repair something. It's interesting. Huh. Okay, I'm glad she's fixed it. Uh, so, Someone's here? Yeah. Yes. Um, so, thoughts you might have about this, um, Mrs. Rummer, about this chapter? Thoughts you might have. Hi, Anna, you're just in time. Do I still have you on mute, Mrs. Grummer? Just come sit down and sit down here. I'm sorry. My son is in mute again. Okay. Uh, okay, I lost my thought. Oh, there was a lot of instructions given. Yes, ma'am. Now, was the ark of um, gopher wood, or was it of shittim wood? Gopher. I think it was gopher wood, but we can double check that. Yes. Right. That's right. How about you, Jacob? Thoughts you have? Rounds, Jacob. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Wow. It's a heavy talent. Oh, You're good. I wonder why it isn't consistent with my Bible. Right. What is your What does your definition say? It seems the same thing, but but we looked. I looked it up where it was in the Old mm -hmm. Testament. It didn't say it. Okay. Usually well, maybe, maybe maybe we have different talents. It could be there's different talents. Okay. Unit, different units of measure. Well, that would be a weight. Yes. That one, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it would be. The, the 21, right. maybe this one mm -hmm. is in a weight. Because right? usually he carries it all the way through. Yeah. I, I understand, but to, to see, one may be, I get it. One, one could be referring to a, a weight, in other words, monetary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Jake, if you have some thoughts, more thoughts about this chapter, chapter 25, do you? Well, uh, you know, we were going through the laws after the Ten Commandments. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just recently got done going through uh, the book of Deuteronomy, and there's so much more there to explain a lot of that stuff. Uh, that book is so good. Deuteronomy. So that clarifies yeah. some even, even, even greater things, doesn't that? Uh, I would, uh, That's good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So much there. Good recommendation. Mm -hmm. uh, Elaine, thoughts you have about chapter 25? some good wood there we have uh, he was using uh, and that was overlaid with gold uh, Paul your thoughts That's just that's just the, the type of style of wood it is. Um, I'm not sure what the equivalent the equivalent is. 
I'm not sure the what the origin of the word. I think he's asking. He yeah. thinks it's a dirty word. Okay. No, what? But it's not. Well, it's it's a, it's a type of word. Tammy, go ahead. Here it says um, in the footnote it says Hebrew acacia. Acacia. So it, it comes from the acacia tree, Paul. Okay, thank you. Sure. And. Uh, but, in our terms, we, we call we, we call it like treated wood. It had to be stronger than that, wouldn't it? Yeah, probably. Nice, nice, strong wood. You know. Uh, Bill, thoughts that you might have about this uh, chapter? No, nothing in particular. Okay. No. Anna, chapter 25, Vexus. Thoughts you might have about this chapter, <laughs> about this book, or if you're stumped uh, about the entire Old Testament, or even want to go bigger than that, you can the Bible. But um. Uh, about Exodus, something about Exodus 25, uh, or... Are you going to keep giving us your thoughts, or am I supposed to you give please, mine? Please give me your thoughts. Well, I don't have too many, but I guess we were talking about the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, that's right. And it's very interesting. I see verse 22 mentions the mercy seat. Yes. Um, which, all of this was a picture of heaven. Like, you know, Hebrews talks yes. about, and like, the, we don't really know where the Ark of the Covenant is, but mm -hmm. it's not important because we can come, we can enter into the actual throne room of God through yes, prayer. We can. Mm -hmm. And then we don't need, we no longer need the, the physical mm -hmm. tabernacle because, um, <clears throat> There's the real thing mm -hmm. that we have access to right. mm -hmm. since Christ rent the veil in two. Yes, that's right. Your thoughts, Mom, about this chapter? I don't have any No thoughts? thoughts? Okay. Um, if we get some, let me know. Tammy. I will, for sure. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I mentioned, I mentioned several things earlier. So I don't know if I have anything new. It's just interesting that instructions are so very specific. Yes, very specific. I guess, I guess when I looked at, um, at the temple, when the temple was being built, and the, we had we had a master craftsman mm -hmm. there as well. Yes. So, which Hiram. is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, they would have made, if they had to make those staves again, they would have made them correctly. Mm -hmm. They would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, if there any more comments or thoughts about chapter 25. Uh, Bill, please, please close in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the message uh, that you have given us uh, through the Bible. Um, we understand that uh, to study uh, this particular time period and uh, the symbolism, how it carries through uh, into... Uh, New Testament times and the church age in particular for us and uh, uh, we can appreciate how intricate uh, the mm -hmm. details are of everything that you have done uh, and your whole message of salvation how the great lengths that you have gone to to make it clear to every person to understand uh, that they need to come to Christ for salvation mm -hmm. People who look at the message of uh, the Bible in a casual way don't take very much into consideration because they don't know very much uh, about it. But uh, everyone who reads the Bible learns that there is much reason why we need to come to Christ for salvation. Uh, you, the Bible proves itself. Mm -hmm. It needs no other source. Uh, for this, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Those days might have been thicker because they had